John Augustus Sutter, born Johann August Sutter, is a Swiss-born pioneer who leaves his wife and five children and comes to America to escape his personal debts back home. Like many who came to America, the country lent them the opportunity to start over, a new life on a new soil. Sutter eventually settles himself in California, which at this time is still a province of Mexico. So he ventures to the capital at Monterey to ask permission from the governor, Juan Bautista Alvarado, in order to settle. To be able to qualify for land ownership, Sutter becomes a Mexican citizen on August 29, 1840. He soon thereafter receives title to 48,827 acres of land on the Sacramento River. He names his new settlement New Helvetia, New Switzerland. With the help of the Maidu Indians, Sutter builds the fort that one day the doomed Donner Party would reach out to for aid. His sights are set on building his new Switzerland and creating an agricultural empire. James W. Marshall is a New Jersey-born farmer and carpenter who, much like John Sutter, finds himself in the middle of the nation seeking to find a way to establish himself. After droughts foiled his attempts at farming and falling ill with malaria, Marshall joins an immigrant wagon train that's headed west, destined for Oregon's Willamette Valley. Marshall makes his way down into California, where he reaches Sutter's Fort. John Sutter places him under his employ, and Marshall finds his financial fortunes on the upswing. He once again becomes a farmer. Soon after, though, the conflict and tensions between Mexico and the U.S. begin, and James Marshall joins Captain John C. Fremont's California Battalion in the short-lived Bear Flag Revolt. He returns home to his ranch and finds that his cattle have either strayed or have been stolen. With no source of income, he loses his land. Marshall soon enters into partnership with John Sutter to build and operate a sawmill in Coloma, California, on the American River, just 40 miles upstream of Sutter's Fort. While under construction, in January 1848, it's discovered that the ditch which drains the water away from the water wheel is much too narrow and shallow to handle the amount of water that it is needed to keep the saw operational. Marshall opts to use the river's natural force to do the excavating for him in order to enlarge the tail race. There was no other choice but to take this action over the course of the night because if done during the workday, the process could endanger the lives of his men working on the mill. On the morning of January 24th, Marshall goes out to examine the progress of the channel below the mill. As he is surveying the developments from the night before, he notices a few flecks in the water, catching the light of the sun and shining back at him. He would later recount, I picked up one or two pieces and examined them attentively, and having some general knowledge of minerals, I could not call to mind more than two which, in any way, resembled this, sulfurate of iron, very bright and brittle, and gold, bright yet malleable. I then tried it between two rocks and found that it could be beaten into a different shape, but not broken. I then collected four or five pieces and went up to Mr. Scott, who was working at the carpenter's bench, making the mill wheel with the pieces in my hand and said, I have found it. James W. Marshall. James Marshall's primary focus and responsibility would remain to be the completion of the sawmill. So he sees no harm in permitting his crew to search for gold during their free time. Perhaps this is why it takes him four whole days before he travels to Sutter's Fort to show his findings to his partner, John Sutter. There, the two men examine the gold further and even reference an encyclopedia to make sure of the properties. They agree to keep the discovery quiet, but little do they know that it's already too late. A young journalist by the name of Samuel Brannan, who owns a general store, has employees of John Sutter purchase goods from him, and these men, 
pay with gold flecks that they have taken from the American in their spare time. This encounter ignites Brannon's curiosity, and he travels to the mill as a representative of the LDS church, where he receives tithes of gold from the LDS workers. Soon the news that there is gold being harvested from the American River will spread far and wide, faster than the metal can be pulled from the ground. Samuel Brannan takes his newly acquired information and wastes little time in molding it into a means by which he can turn a profit. His general store would soon be selling picks, pans, and shovels to any and all who crossed his threshold with their glints of gold swirling in their eyes. The events that take place in the coming years is perhaps one of the greatest human migrations in modern times. The world is in love, obsessed, and enchanted by the promise of gold. Never before in the years that follow has the world been mobilized and drawn to one place with such speed, zeal, and recklessness. An accidental discovery in the American River will end up seducing the entire world. There are two times in a man's life when he should not speculate. When he can't afford it, and when he can. Mark Twain. One of the many ironies of the California gold rush is that the two men who make the initial find would end up losing their land to hordes of squatters who would swarm in from all corners of the world and in some cases indiscriminately tear up the land in order to search for gold. They did this on lands that had little to no regulation put upon them and those lands that did have regulation had no one to do the regulating. Meanwhile, there's a shopkeep by the name of Samuel Brannan, a Mormon and also a reporter who gains knowledge of the discovery of gold in the American River purely by accident because of the imprudent purchase by a few of Sutter's men. The men come into Samuel Brannan's general store and pay for goods with the gold dust that they've found. This seemingly innocuous transaction would result in Samuel Brannan becoming the first millionaire of the California gold rush. Brannan ends up selling picks and pans to those squatters and prospectors, and he builds his fortune on the hopes and dreams of those travelers eager to find that same fortune in the streams and in the hills. His money was not made in the gold fields. Brannan's riches were harvested from the much more abundant fields of prospectors and adventurers. Gold, gold, gold from the American River, Samuel Brannan shouts through the streets of San Francisco, holding high a vial of nuggets and dust that he has found. His claim was in fact true, and another truth was that he had the only general store between San Francisco and the burgeoning gold fields. His marketing ploy worked, and he turned the ears of all those around him. One vial of gold and one ton of hype, and he got the adrenaline pumping in the hearts of everyone within earshot. The picks and pans he purchased for pennies apiece, he was able to turn around and resell for upwards of $15 to $20 each. Supply and demand in its rawest and purest form. His timing and industrious nature would carry him far. Samuel Brannan's general store provided a much needed service for all of those hungry to get their hands dirty and pull gold nuggets and dust from the pristine California landscape. The whole country from San Francisco to Los Angeles and from the seashore to the base of the Sierra Nevadas resounds with the sordid cry of gold, gold, gold. While the field is left half planted, the house half built, and everything neglected but the manufacture of shovels and pickaxes. The Californian. Within a matter of days, most of the 800 residents of San Francisco rushed off to the gold fields in search of riches. 
their sudden evacuation, leaving the city a near ghost town. The newspaper, The Californian, even announced that it would be suspending publication because its staff had left for the gold fields. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.